out of the past. Phantoms of a world gone by speak again their immortal tale. The Goblet. This is an occasion. It calls for wine. Sweet wine to think back, to reflect, to decide. Wine to make a fateful decision. Ah, well. A toast, my silver nemesis. Come, a toast to Francesca who has left me. <laughs> yes, to Francesca. Why not? Uh, well, little goblet, we're alone, huh? Now we can talk, just you and I, huh? <laughs> they would think me mad if they came upon me now. Came upon me, His Excellency, Donaldo Rinaldi, governor of this island, talking to a silver goblet. But they do not know that you are really alive. That you have a black heart and a blacker soul. No. They do not know, but I know. Now I must make a decision, my beautiful, glittering friend. Whether to keep you forever or destroy you forever. Whether to go on until death with you or without you. Strange how a sweet wine tastes bitter when taken from your cold embrace, little goblet. I look deep into your silvery mirror and you reflect the things in my mind, little goblet, so that I may see them with my eyes. Recall to me a day long ago. Donaldo, why are you looking at me like that? Don't you know, Francesca? I love you, Francesca. Donaldo. Yes, I love you. I ask you to be my wife. But I am of humble birth, the daughter of the village doctor. And you, you are His Excellency, the governor. You are a woman and I am a man. And that is all that is important. Will you, Francesca? Will you marry me? Yes, Donaldo. If you want me, I will be your wife. I shall never forget that glorious day. The day before you were created. I was delirious with happiness. I bought Francesca every gift money could buy. Fine gowns, a new coach, spirited horses. And I found that Francesca had a passion for things wrought in silver. I found a young silversmith who lived on the island and whose name was Ferdinand. A crafty fellow. He made Francesca a bracelet. It was a rare piece of work, a work of art. And in its graceful lines and smooth luster, there was something else, an indefinable, strange something. When I slipped the bracelet over Francesca's wrist, she was breathless, enchanted. Oh, it's beautiful, Donaldo. Exquisite. I'm glad you're pleased, Francesca. Shall I bring you other things from the same craftsman? A necklace? Earrings? I did not know that there was a silversmith like this in all of Italy. There may not be, for all I know. I had this made right here on the island. Here? On the island? Donaldo, who is this silversmith? Well, a man named Ferdinand. I found him quite by accident. Ferdinand? Ferdinand. You speak as though the name intrigues you, Francesca. Do you know him? No. No, I've never met him. Face to face. But it's almost as though... As though what, Francesca? I don't know. What I do know is that his work was made just for me. Look at this bracelet, Donaldo. See how it curves over my wrist. Somehow it feels warm there instead of cold. Almost as though it were live flesh instead of metal. Oh, come now, Francesca. You're imagining things. No, no, Donaldo. I'm right. This silver has a strange lifelike quality. When I put my cheek against it, it, it feels like a warm, living caress. See? Hold your hand to it. Hmm? It feels like silver to me, my dear. 
like cold metal. But if it makes you happy to believe it alive, you shall have your whimsy. More wine, little goblet. Wine to think, to reflect, to recall. More wine to redden your silvery insides and to warm mine. Mm. It grows more bitter still, this vintage. All that you are is bitterness, and all that touches you grows bitter. But come now and listen to me. Where was I? Oh, yes, the bracelet. Francesca could not take her eyes off it. She wore it constantly, caressed it, touched it tenderly, insisted it had a heart and a soul. I was happy. I laughed then. Ah, if I'd only known. Then came another day. It was a day I thought of happy omen. And did I not have a right to think that? Donaldo, you know... There is something I cannot understand. What is it, my dear? How can this wonderful silversmith of yours, this Ferdinand, capture so much of me in his silver without ever having seen me? He'll see you today, Francesca. Donaldo, what do you mean? He's working on your wedding ring, and today it's ready to be fitted. Oh, so I shall see Ferdinand today. Yes. Is meeting this silversmith so important to you, my dear? I thought it would be the wedding ring that would intrigue you. Oh, yes, yes, Donaldo, of course it is. Forgive me, it's just that I'm glad you commissioned Ferdinand to make it. I love his work so much. Does it matter so much who makes it, as long as it binds us together? Of course not. It's just that I thought you might have sent for an elaborate ring in Italy. There isn't enough time. The wedding is too near. Well, my dear, when shall we go down for the fitting? Now, Donaldo. Let us go now. Then I must have had some faint premonition of what was to come. But at the time, Francesca's eagerness seemed natural enough. I called for a coach and we rode down to Ferdinand's shop. A place you'll know well, huh, little goblin? Francesca, my dear, this is Ferdinand. Signorina, I am honored. No. It is I who am honored to meet so great an artist. You are very kind, Signorina. You have great talent, rare talent. The things you have made for me, why, they seem to breathe life. I felt the same life in my fingers when I molded the silver and shaped it. I made it just for you, Signorina. All this is very well, but it's taking time. What of the ring, Ferdinand? Is it ready? Yes, Signor. Here it is. Oh, it is lovely. Lovely. Like all the other things you make. Come, my dear. Let me try it on your finger. Oh, it's a loose fit, Ferdinand. Yes, I regret it is, Signor, and my apologies. This is the first time I have made an error in my knowledge of the lady. Up to now, I have always seemed to know her. Yes, I, I have told His Excellency of this strange feeling of affinity many times. Well, Ferdinand... What are we going to do about the ring? I shall have to rework it again, Excellency. But that will take time, man. The wedding's only three days away. Have no fear, Excellency. It will be ready for another fitting tomorrow. Tomorrow? I have affairs of state to attend to tomorrow. It will be impossible for me to come down. Why not just measure her finger now and be done with it? No, Excellency. There must be another fitting. I want this ring to be perfect. Of course, Donaldo. You can attend to your work tomorrow. I'll, I'll come down alone in the carriage. It'll only take a few minutes. Oh, very well. But see that the ring fits tomorrow, Ferdinand, or you'll answer to me. How was I to know, little goblet? Hmm? How was I to know that this little silversmith had captured my beloved not only with his work, but with himself? Like a fool, I let her go down to his shop alone. It was only later, when it was too late, that I found out what it was. The ring is ready, Signorina. Allow me to put it on your finger. Oh, thank you, Ferdinand. It seems to fit perfectly. A symbol of happiness. Or is it, Signorina? What do you mean? You know what I mean. I, I'm not sure I do. Ronaldo's a good man. He's rich, handsome, considerate, and, and kind. I did not mention Donaldo's name, Signorina. No. No, but you had it on your mind. 
There isn't a woman on this island who does not envy me. A woman cannot live on envy, signorina. She must love and be loved. But Donaldo loves me. That is apparent. Yes, to... but do you love him? Why, I... The truth, signorina. No, never mind. I know the truth. I can see it in your eyes. Now can you see what is in mine? Ferdinand, what... I made things of silver only for you. They called to you, did they not, Francesca? They drew you to me. I made them live. I molded them with my heart and soul. When I polished them, I saw your face in their reflection. They were meant for you because I was meant for you. Ferdinand, what are you saying? I'm saying that I love you. And you love me. Ferdinand, I... I... You came to me alone. You can never leave me. We are one together, bound by a cord of silver around our hearts. You love me, Francesca. Say it. Say it. Yes. Yes. I love you, Ferdinand. Oh, Francesca, my darling. Didn't you know? Did you just discover it? No. No, I, I knew. I must have known. You did know. I sent you the message of my love and the silver I made, and you responded. But it's too late, Ferdinand. I promised Donaldo that... No, it is not too late. You cannot learn the rest of your life to keep a promise. Come away with me, Francesca. There's a little inn I know by the sea. We'll find a priest there and be married. When Francesca did not return, I hurried down to the shop. Are you thirsty, little goblin? More wine? Yeah. At the shop, a coachman told me he had seen Francesca leave with the silversmith Ferdinand and had overheard their destination. I hurried after them, my brain fevered with a kind of madness and with murder in my heart. I entered the inn and softly opened the door to their room a few inches. They did not hear me. Francesca, my beloved, I have a gift for you. Why, it's a goblet. A silver goblet. Oh, Ferdinand, it, it's beautiful. Like everything else you make. Alive. Yes. When I made it, I hated it. It was to be my wedding gift to you and to him. But now it is ours, ours. And remember, as long as you have it, I shall have you. It will be a symbol of our love. Come, Francesca. While we're waiting for the priest, let us drink a toast to our future happiness. No, Francesca. Donaldo! Put on your cape, Francesca. I'm taking you home. Don't go with him, Francesca. He cannot hold you now. You're free of him. Don't go. As for you, my little silversmith, I'm going to banish you from this island forever. You know I'm a good man, my evil little goblet. I thought what I was doing was best for Francesca. I believed she'd get over this foolish infatuation and marry me. You see, I loved her. And after all, I could give her everything she wanted. I kept her in my villa under my housekeeper, Rosa's chaperonage, hoping that she would relent and marry me. I suppose Francesca was, in a sense, a prisoner... I don't know. All I know is that I wanted her more than anything else in the world. And I tried everything. everything. Francesca? Francesca? Oh, my dear, you need a wrap. You'll catch cold out here on the balcony. Leave me alone, Donaldo. Oh, I see you already have company. That, that goblet. Holding it up to the sun again. Watching it reflect the light. Talking to it. Fondling it. Please, Donaldo. I don't want to discuss it. Perhaps you don't, but I do. When are you going to come to your senses, my dear? People think you're mad each day at sunset, standing on this balcony, holding that accursed silver goblet to the sun till it dazzles the eyes. I did not ask to come here. You've kept me here for two years. Francesca, 
Listen to me. I've got a surprise for you. Rosa. Oh, yes, Signorina. Five new gowns, all the way from Paris. They are exquisite, the latest mode. The dressmaker is waiting for you now. Well, Francesca, doesn't that interest you? Don't you care? When will you learn, Donaldo? Your gifts don't interest me. I don't care for your gowns and your jewels. There's only one thing you care about, eh, hey, Francesca? That silversmith, Ferdinand. Please go away. Please leave me alone. Francesca, for the love of heaven, will you put that goblet down? Stop holding it in the sun. The reflection's blinding me. It does not blind me, Donaldo. That goblet, always that goblet. Must I compete against a piece of silver? Must it always be between us? Give me that goblet, Francesca. No. No, Donaldo. It is all I have to remind me of... Of Ferdinand? Precisely. Give me that goblet. You'll not take it away. You'll not. If you do, I shall die. On the contrary, my dear, you'll come to your senses again. Now, for the last time. No. No. Very well, then. I shall have to take it by force. Donaldo. Give me no. that goblet. No. I must be free of it. And so must you. You recall all this, hmm? My little silver friend. Do I see you grinning at me from your perch there on the table? Well, then I shall drown your grin with more wine. More wine to think. To think. For the time has come, little goblet, when you and I must come to terms, one way or the other. Yes. Ah. Wine still tastes bitter. No matter. I must live with bitterness forever in any event. But recall again what happened. I took you away from Francesca, strode down to the rocks and threw you into the Mediterranean as far as I could throw. I saw the water carry you out. And then with my own eyes saw you sink. Yes, sink. And then a week later, Someone's at the door, Rosa. See who it is. Yes, Excellency. Good afternoon, Signora. My name is Mario. I am a fisher boy at the village. What do you want? Pardon, Signora, but I must see His Excellency the Governor. Go away, boy. His Excellency cannot be disturbed by ragamuffins. But, Signora, I have found something very precious. It is so precious that it could only belong to His Excellency. See? Huh? Why, it is the Signorina's goblet. The goblet? Boy! You found the goblet? Yes, Your Excellency. Come here, boy. Come into the room. Now, tell me where you found this goblet. On the beach near the Narrows, Excellency. I was fishing there when I spied it coming in on the tide. I picked it up and came straight here. Oh, is this a cursed goblet? Always it must come between us. Why? Why? Excellency, Go I... away now, boy. Go away, do you hear? Yes, Signora. Yes. Oh, Excellency, is something wrong? Yes, Rosa. This goblet is wrong. It's a silver incarnation of evil that must be destroyed. <laughs> Excellency, why did you throw the goblet like that? You broke the lamp. I must destroy this evil thing. Smash it against the wall. Oh, Excellency. Uh, oh. oh, Rosa. Rosa, pick up the goblet from the floor. Give it to me. Yes, Excellency. Here it is. No. No. It cannot be. I smashed the goblet against the wall. You saw me, Rosa. And yet, look. It is a miracle, Excellency. A miracle. Yeah. A devil's miracle. There's not a nick in it. Not a scratch. And its surface shines brighter than ever. What could I do, huh? little goblet? What could I do against a power like yours? I thought then of Francesca. Believe me, I meant her no harm. I'm a good man, really. A good governor, a humane man. And I loved Francesca. And I brought the goblet into her. When she saw it, a strange light came into her eyes. The goblet. Donaldo, 
You've brought the garter back. Yes, my dear. Give it to me. Give it to me, Donaldo. Oh, Jessica, please, you're not yourself. Perhaps we'd better place it in the vault until... No, you... no. I must have it now. Now. Very well, my dear. Francesca, where are you going? Out on the balcony, Donaldo. I want to look at it again. The rays of the sun. There is a light. A light I must see. Again she held you up, a cursed goblet. Again came that blinding flash of light when you met the sun. I staggered from the room, my eyes smarting from the glare. Threw myself on my bed, tried to sleep, but I could not sleep. My eyes were wide open, my evil destiny. I saw only you, jeering at me, taunting me, as you are doing now. It was only this morning that Angelo Lanzi, my police chief, came to see me. Excellency, I have a report of interest. Well, Lanzi, well? That silversmith you banished from the island, he has come back. Back? Yes. Ferdinand? I believe that was his name. A little man mumbling to himself, always mumbling one word. Goblet. Yes, Excellency, goblet. How did you know? Never mind, never mind. Lanzi, where did you see this silversmith? Why, it's very strange, Excellency. He stood on the hill overlooking the customs house and stared at your villa. Yes, Lanzi, yes? There was something bright flashing from an upper story. The gleam of metal in the sun, perhaps. The silversmith watched it as though, as though it were some kind of signal. He never took his eyes from it. Excellency, Excellency, something has happened. Yes, Rosa? Julio, the guard, he has been attacked. It's Ferdinand. He's come for Francesca. The trellis to our balcony. Come with me, Rosa. We must stop them. Yes, Excellency. Francesca, it's I, Donaldo. Open the door, do you hear? Francesca! There is no answer, Excellency. I am afraid. Francesca, in the name of heaven, speak! Rosa, step to one side. I'm going to break down the door. Yes, Excellency. Oh, she has gone, Excellency. See, the French windows to the balcony are open. But she has left the silver goblet on the table. Yes. Rosa, she has left the goblet. Excellency, the goblet. It is a fire from the rays of the sun. <gasps> Mamiya, look. It is a blinding light, a sign from heaven, surely, an evil sign. Yes, Rosa. Shut the windows and draw the blinds. Yes, Excellency. Now leave me, Rosa. Go about your duties. But, Excellency, Leave I... me alone with the goblet. You hear? Yes, Excellency, if this is your wish. Rosa has gone away as I ordered her to and left me alone. <laughs> Francesca is gone. My beloved is gone. But, oh, how considerate of her. She left me you. You! You! But are you not a part of her? Did she not say herself that everything that silversmith made for her became a part of her? Lived as she did? Had a soul and life? Yes, Goblet. You... She left me more than she could ever give me when she herself was here. <laughs> she left me you. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the immortal tale, The Goblet. Bellkeeper! <laughs>